Hey everyone, just want to talk to you a little bit about solar. Um, it's the kind of uh, the middle of January here. Um, there ain't a whole lot of snow, but it's kind of chilly out here, but not bad. Um, still generating electricity. Um, I put in a 15 kilowatt system. Uh, in my area here, I'm only allowed to do up to 20 kilowatts, uh, so I went shy of that. However, I wired my main line from the house out here. Um, I put my inverter inside, um, which I would highly recommend doing if you want your inverter to last. Uh, being indoors, um, like anything else, out of the elements will help things last longer. And that's how I did it. I ran a number two, um, three line, or I ran four lines of spare um, from my array here to the house. Reason being is that I wanted to be able to add on uh, down the road if I need to, so I can add another 11 panels onto my 15 kilowatt system already. Um, so just want to tell you, show you a little bit about my array here. Um, I have to do a little bit of fixing on it because when I was installing this, um, we had about a week of rain. I had my main beams put up and the lumber was already wet. So five days of rain made things warp even worse. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work on this to straighten it out, which is not gonna be a whole lot of work, uh, but you can, you'll be able to tell um, that my array has a little bit of wave in it. Not a big deal. Um, but this is how I did it using telephone poles and posts in the ground and uh, two by eights structure. So it's very sound, very solid, and uh, probably about the most reasonable way to go. If you, if you can get a hold of the steel to do it, do it in steel. However, steel is very expensive. So here is what I did. Here's my solar array. You can see there's a little bit of a wave to it, which I'll be repairing this uh, spring, um, but whoop de doo So I got to look at it for a little while. Very solid setup. Make sure you're facing directly south and pay attention to your sun. Uh, I was worried about having a tree right here, but after thinking about it, leaves are gone in the winter time. The sun comes right up right over those pine trees, hits me directly. I pump a lot of juice out of this thing. The way I looked at it, uh, every month my electric bill was 275 a month. We have a plan here where we just pay that every month. Reason being it was higher is because I run geothermal in my house. Uh, so I'm running a pump and uh, my blower unit and then cooling in the summer, which is generally a lot cheaper. But plus I have kids um, in a fairly big house, about a 3000 square foot house. So, um, you know, it takes a little bit more to heat. So since I put this in, um, I just kept making that same 275 a month payment uh, that I would have paid for electricity. Took out a small interest loan to pay for all this. That was $23,000. And um, basically, I'm paying my electric bill from what I would have normally paid for the next three years, because I've already been through this a year. And when after three years, my whole system will be paid for with a little bit of extra interest. And I will be free and clear of all of my utilities because I use geothermal. I don't buy any fuel or anything like that to burn the heat. Um, so I will ultimately have no utility bill whatsoever for anything uh, besides a, a monthly fee to connect to the grid because I am grid connected um, to my house uh, to the electric lines because I don't have batteries or anything like that those things are pretty expensive and I don't really want to get into that at this point um, so uh, pretty reasonable 23 grand minus eight about 15 grand roughly um, is a total for putting in a 15 kilowatt system. Not bad at all if you do it yourself. Um, otherwise, if you hire somebody or a company to come out, they're gonna want all this high-end um, metal work for your array. That's gonna cost you, uh, when I was looking, it was just unbelievably expensive. Um, 20 grand just for the array to hold your panels. So um, I saved about $40,000 not having somebody install this. Um, so if you got the land, do an array like this, worth it every dollar, um, expandable, pretty simple stuff to do. You could probably get this done in, a, in two or three weekends if you really, really worked hard. Um, I'm in love with solar. I think it's awesome. Everybody should do it. A uh, big, large system like this is easily done. Um, you don't have to 
hire somebody to do it. If you're handy enough and you know how to run power tools, it's all it takes. Get some solar, get it rolling, you will be happy. So in total, I have 44 panels for a 15 kilowatt system. These are the G10 uh, Q-cells. Um, they're very highly efficient panels. Uh, I think up to 20, 21% efficiency. They're awesome, they rock. I think they're 480 watts per panel. Don't quote me on that. Um, worked out great. All I did was use uh, strut, galvanized strut. Um, because of the length of the panels, I had to weld on a section. So all I did was weld it on, sprayed a little bit of the, you can buy the galvanizing spray, as you can see. It's been out here over a year hasn't really corroded or rusted at all. So make yourself a jig, lay these out, weld them on, really simple. That's what I used for my uh, construction. Very, very solid, not going anywhere. We've had some pretty big storms rip through here and this thing didn't even squeak. So um, as you can see, my main beams that got wet, warped before I could even put in my my uh, cross bracing that I wanted to get in. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna have to do is just take some hurricane ties, mount uh, a new two by eight or two by six on there and straighten them out. Not a big deal. And then I'll get my cross braces put in. Looks like crap right now, but uh, you'll see when it's done. Maybe I'll do a recap. So then all I did was I got a hold of some telephone poles, um, really cheap. I think I paid $10 a pole. Um, had a buddy come out with an excavator and a drill, drilled them in. These things ain't going anywhere. They're five feet down below the frost line. Um, if anything can take these out, I would be surprised. I ended up using the uh, six inch by four inch posts in the front uh, because I didn't have the poles. Um, all I did was, as you can see, they're just lagged in through the struts, which is plenty strong. Um, the hardest part is getting them lined up, everything lined up straight. So once you get these mounted individually, uh, it doesn't take very long to do. Basically, you have to run this copper grounding down and attach it to every single panel. That's code and for your safety. In my main runs, there's three legs here. So you take your 44 panels and divide them into three. I have three legs going in to my main power into the house, into the inverter. Um, you have to divide them up because, you know, wiring can only take so much voltage. So that's why you have to separate out the three different legs. Uh, so basically you run your main connectors, Run them down again, basically get these little grounding units and some copper wire bare, or you can have your other stuff, your regular coated copper. Um, this stuff's pretty reasonable. Just gotta make sure it's grounded and that's by code. All the panels just connect with a quick connect. Uh, be careful there are, there's power in these when you go to connect them because they are charged already from just being in the sun. Um, same thing up here, just leg bolted in. Pretty simple stuff. Anybody can do this. This is so easy, you just have to have a plan, the materials, and a buddy who has, you know, a bobcat with a, with a, with a drill on it, a ground drill to sink your holes in makes things go a lot easier. Um, so I ran my lines all the way down. Um, three different legs. I put them through this conduit here. Um, everything feeds right in to this midnight solar box. This is a combiner box. I'm not gonna open it. It's basically has uh, three breakers in it, one for each leg. And from there, they combine out and go down into the ground. Make sure you ground things out. And then from there, you go into the house to the inverter. Well, there's another combiner in there because I'm going from number two, which is pretty big stuff. That's like stuff that feeds your house size. So um, 
I went from in there, the combiner into my inverter, which I can show you here um, on a, in a different part of this video. So, so again, that's a midnight solar, a little bit pricey, but really good quality stuff. Uh, it's all weatherproof. Um, I did have one problem the spring when we had about five inches of rain um, was where my gang box down here, this guy right here, filled up with water because my I bought these supposed uh, rubber sealed units that go in here. Uh, they have a little rubber thing you cut a hole and stick these in. Didn't do a very good job and ended up filling up with water. Thankfully my inverter, uh, my Feronius inverter detected that and shut down. Uh, I was a little concerned at first because I didn't know what was going on. But as soon as I pulled this plate off, water just dripped right out of it. You can see in the winter when the stuff's melting, you kind of really, you really want to have stuff solidly closed up. Um, otherwise, you're going to have water inf infiltration. So, and then everything's just zip tied, all these cables. So make sure you lay everything out, everything like anything. Uh, it's all in the planning stage. So, and I purchased all this stuff during the pandemic. So it was stupid expensive. Um, Altogether, my whole system uh, for a 15 kilowatt system uh, put in was $23,000, me doing it. Um, and I got a rebate close to $8,000 back uh, from the government rebate. So you minus that, you know, right around $15,000. So after running my power in right along this edge here, uh, just come in with an LB inside to my inverter and there's another shutoff inside uh, I have a combiner because remember I oversized my wiring coming into the house so that I could add on uh, to my solar panel array if I ever need to so it goes in comes back out because you have to have this shutoff outside of your house um, just in case there's an emergency or a fire police need to know that it's here and that there is a, a cutoff uh, for it. So you had to come in and out, back in again. And then from here, it goes into the main panel, which turns your meter in reverse when it's generating. That's what being grid connected is all about. So the power comes in here into this combiner box. Uh, it's a larger combiner box because I am running number two wire into it, which from the panels, um, I decided to go with that larger wire so that I can expand and add more panels if I ever need to. Here's your number twos coming in. Crazy to think how large these are. And then from there, all that goes to that inverter are these 12 gauge wires going into the Feronius and then it goes up and out to that disconnect and then comes back in and your power goes right into your panel and I believe it's a 60 right at the top there amp that goes back into the power grid which causes the meter to spin in reverse when you're creating electricity that's all it is in here it's pretty simple this is nothing nothing fancy and converts it right over simple as that easy to do yourself Cleaning off snow in the winter is easy as just a broom and an old pool handle uh, from a filter or from a vacuum pool thing that I had. I just mounted it to my broom. It actually comes off pretty easy. Just slide right off so it's not a whole lot of work. Ice on the other hand, you kind of got to wait for that to melt off. <laughs> 